Hello and welcome to another 3 ABN Today program. Thank you for joining us as you do each and every day. What a blessing it is to serve the Lord and what a blessing it is to have a family, Yvonne, around the world. It is, it is. And we get to talk to our families and when we go to these uh, rallies, we get to see you in person. Absolutely. So it's and we're going to be going to some, I think, in the next couple months or so. I think we're going to Huntsville. Next week, going, in the next few weeks. The next couple um, weeks mm -hmm. or so. Then we're going to Minnesota, I think, in mm -hmm. May. And so we're, we're going to be going. So be sure to look at the schedules and hopefully when we're at some of these rallies, you can come and come and join us. We're here with Ryan Day. Pastor Des, good to have you here today. Always a blessing to be a part of the 3ABN Thursday Night Live and just want to welcome everyone at home. We're going to have a great discussion tonight. And down in that seat, there's a big screen <laughs> and there with inside that TV screen is Pastor James Rafferty. Brother Rafferty, hey, it's good hey, to have hey. you. <laughs> let me uh, out, let me out. <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> absolutely love it. You know, used to, if we Skyped, we had, we'd put a picture up or something while someone talked. Now you're just like you're right here with us. He's at the other end of the table, so we love it. He couldn't be here, but you're going to be here next week or so, right? And you guys start and yes. take some Sabbath school programs yes. and all of that. So we love it when you and Reese are here. And uh, we're going to be doing camp meeting, I think, starting June 5th. So put that on your calendar and get ready for that. That reminded me of all the folk that are going to be coming here. We're going to have a great camp meeting. Mm -hmm. And we're going to start out Wednesday night, actually, with uh, Larry Gatlin. And uh, used to be Larry Gatlin, you know, and the, and the Gatlin brothers. That's right. They still, Larry's been singing, the family, they still sing. He's a Christian, giving his life to the Lord. Got a great testimony. So he's going to be here at 6 o'clock Wednesday evening. And that's um, June the 5th. So that's first night of camp meeting. So I know we're going to have a lot of people. So come, come quick, come early so you'll get a seat. Uh, enjoy the blessings of camp meeting. We'll be there throughout the week. So we're looking forward to that. Then also, before we get on, our topic's going to be a hot topic tonight. So we're going to talk politics. How about Ooh. that? Ooh. I always say oh. we try to stay, you try to stay away from <laughs> politics, right? But sometimes you can't help it. So, well, let me rephrase that. We're going to talk Bible. All right. We're going to talk Bible. If you want to talk politics, you can talk politics, but we're going to talk Bible. <laughs> so that's there all that we go. believe in is what the Bible says. We really don't care what politics say, whether you're on the left or the right or somewhere in between. We're just worried about and, and concerned about what God says, and we want to be one of those in that number when he, eastern skies break and we can look up and say, Lo, this is our God whom mm -hmm. we've waited for. He has come to save us. Mm -hmm. Pastor James, Amen. again, it's so good to have you here. And uh, we, 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 when we do topics like this, I really want you to be around because I look at <laughs> Brother James as more of a, he's, he's scholarly, I'm not. <laughs> So he's very organized. He's very studied. He's been studying this sure. message. And we're going to be talking about end time prophecies. We're going to be talking about things. I think we put the title, Can Christians Enforce Morality? Or maybe should Christians try to force morality? So you can see why I say politics, because somebody's going to say, uh-oh, they're going to the left or they're going to the right. And we may talk about, and I think we will. I think we'll talk about some of the things on both sides tonight. But we're going to end up somewhere in between right with the Word of God. So thank you again, Pastor James, for being here. God bless you and Reese for what you all do for the cause of God. Now, before we get started, we have a brand new project, Yvonne, and that is the book, Can, Can the Christian Church Affirm LGBTQ? The one that we wrote has been out several months. We, uh, we, we've got a plan for that, Brother James, and that plan is we want that book to go to every Christian pastor or every pastor in America. Amen. So everyone of, in America. Of every denomination. Of every denomination. So we're going to start out, we're starting out this week and putting things together. I think there's 72,000 Baptist churches in the United mm -hmm. States. So we're starting out with getting the addresses together. We're having to get the name list. All of that's a little expensive to get the, the list of, you know, all of those pastors, then do the mailing. We're going to send books virtually to every pastor. Then we're going on to the other denominations from Catholic to Methodist to whatever. And I'm sure the Methodists, we probably should do those first. I think 6,000 churches wow. have split because wow. of that topic, mm -hmm. uh, really about the LGBTQ movement within the church. But this is something. So what we're going to do, Yvonne, how can folk tonight, we're asking if you would like to make a donation to help us get, it's going to be several hundreds of thousands of these books 
will go to virtually every pastor in, in uh, America. If you want willing to help with that and give a tax deductible donation, how, how can they do it? Well, they can, first of all, c call, because there are people tonight in the call center waiting for your calls. You can call 618-627-4651. So you can call in or you can email us live at 3abn.tv or you can go to the website 3, 3abn.tv and you can order the books. Actually, you can order, make the order to sponsor. Right these so, books tonight yeah. because we need sponsors yeah, we to have get people these tonight books who, yeah, who to everyone. That. So your donations, tax deductible, so whatever you can give, whether it's five dollars or five hundred or five thousand will be appreciated. But I think this is a big enough topic <clears throat> within the Christian community that this ne every pastor needs to have some ammunition, I'm going to call it biblical ammunition, yes. as to how to to look at this and responsibly and say, you know, I can see what the Bible says. Then it's up to him to decide how he wants to preach it. But I think it's up to us to get the gospel, get the truth mm -hmm. to the world. So, and, and they would use fund code 350. Fund code 350. Okay. If anybody yes. asks, whoever you can call or it's is there... On the uh, website. It's on the website. Mm -hmm. How they do it tonight? They, so they, if they go to the website, they just, okay. you know, they can order, but it's fund 350. They'll okay. see the numbers, the options there. Okay. And just choose fund 350. Okay. Yeah. And they can uh, email. It says live at 3abn.tv. Is yes, that right? Yes. That's, or just call. If it's, yeah. too, if it's call. just too complicated, Yeah. We'll call. put that up on your screen too. Okay. 618-627-4651. <laughs> And uh, don't you wish Greg and Jill was here because they're so good at I, I can't have certain Jill things I can one. do, but I'm not very good at stuff. She's so organized, you'd she, think she's well, wait, saying I'm not organized. Telephone. No, me. I'm talking, <laughs> I'm sitting here saying, let's see, where do we go? And I caught myself looking down at the phone number that I've known for almost 40 years, right? Well, you so just want to make sure you have it right. Yeah, that, that's right, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So anyway, yes. if you would like to sponsor, help us sponsor these books to go to virtually every pastor in America. We're starting out with this 72,000, but as money comes in, we're going to hit all of the churches. So mm -hmm. if the Lord's impressing on you, then call in, email us, go to our website and uh, however you want to do it. And then use code 350 for your donation and you'll get a tax deductible gift. Well, what I want to do is maybe set the stage a little bit. I'm going to give a little bit of the state of the union, the president of the United States, you know, when He's up speaking, he about once a year, ever so often he gives the State of the Union. Well, I'm not the President of the United States, don't want to be, glad I'm not. And, uh, but what I would like to do is kind of give a little bit in summary here uh, to you all, and because this, as you can tell, we haven't planned everything out, but I've said here's the topics, you guys go for it, and Yvonne, you too, honey. And so <laughs> we're going to do this together, and we've asked the Lord to bless. But I want to say to begin with, if I could give a State of the Church right now, um, mm -hmm. it would be a mess. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's my nutshell. The church of God is a mess. Now we want to talk about, and it's good. So we're going to talk real tonight. We're just going to do this to begin with at my age. I don't have time to wait and put things off to, uh, you know, for a later <laughs> time, Ryan. So young as you are, you can kind of, I, I got to throw it all out here while I can. But if you looked at the state of the church, the Jesus is coming back for a purified bride, a purified church a remnant people of God, those who keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Je testimonies of Jesus, right? That's who he's coming back mm -hmm. for. But do you think right now that we're waiting on Jesus to come back or you think he's waiting on us to perfect his character within our lives so he can come back for that purified bride, that purified church? Mm. I think That's it's right. the latter, don't you? Mm -hmm. That Jesus yep. is waiting on us because we're divided. We're divided by race. We're divided by culture. We're divided by politics all kinds of things within the church. I'm amazed when you go on Facebook, I see Adventist Christian mm -hmm. against Adventist Christian, literally uh, on Facebook. So we're, mm -hmm. <laughs> we're, we're hearing some music from somewhere. Hope that doesn't distract you. And uh, so on, on Facebook, uh, people are like disagreeing and some, some Christians are on this side or the left side, some are on the right side. And it's like, what in the world is going on? Where are people, you know, where are we coming from and what kind of witness is this to a lost and dying world? Mm. So uh, when I say that, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're in a mess, that's mm. what I'm talking about. I believe 
that, I, that we're already in the shaking it started and the good news is we don't have to stay this way. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a great revival coming. There's going to be a latter rain coming. But before that happens, we have to have conversations like we're going to have tonight, even at the expense of maybe offending someone. We're going to have to do that to get so everything out in the open so we can say, Lord, how are you going to heal this? How are you going to heal us if my people will come, right? You know right. the scripture. Mm -hmm. How are you going to do this? Well, first of all, we have to be open. We have to be willing. And we have to, have to put the Bible before any politics, any culture, mm -hmm. any race. That has to come first. May anyway, I read a scripture? Right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, because it, the church is divided. And uh -huh. Jesus in John 17 said, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. Uh -huh. And right now we're so divided that the world can look on, look at the mm -hmm. church and say, this is not, if this is what Christianity is about, then I don't want any part, any part of it because we are not one because mm -hmm. the devil is really, really working hard to divide <clears throat> us. And we have to look globally. We have to look at the big picture and not just itemize things, but look at it from a spiritual place. And that spiritual place is saying, the devil is trying to deceive even the very mm -hmm. elect. Mm -hmm. So if we don't, come together through the Word of God. And that's why it's great that we're doing this program. And again, there might be some people who are offended because mm -hmm. it's going to step on toes, but we have to get to that place where we are one in Christ. Yeah, but if you call me and you're a Christian and you call me or you text me or email or whatever and you say you're offended, I'm going to say, look up Psalms 119, 165. <laughs> great peace have they which <laughs> love thy law and nothing shall offend them. <laughs> Mm. So, All right. so we have to be able to forget about ourselves, right? Not be offended. Mm -hmm. So we have a great, uh, I, I don't want to call it an advantage because it's for everyone, but we have been able to, through God's blessings, he's allowed Latter-day Church to really unlock the prophecies of Daniel Revelation. Mm -hmm. So there's no reason for us to be confused. There's no reason we, those of us Christians who understand prophecy, so what we want to talk about tonight is we want to talk about where are we, where is America in prophecy? Mm -hmm. uh, where is America in prophecy? And is it even, can we look at these books written thousands of years ago, <laughs> Ryan and James, can we look at them and say, okay, let's see, I think that's America. And then somebody, oh, well, no, maybe this, or mm -hmm. well, maybe it's not even in there. Can mm -hmm. we actually show from the Bible America in prophecy? And if it's so, can we get an idea of where we are in that timeline? Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. Amen. There's two scriptures that we can look at for this. One of them is in Revelation 13, and the other one is in Romans 13. So really easy to remember because both of them are chapter 13s. We can start in Revelation 13 as far as trying to identify where we are in Bible prophecy mm -hmm. and, and look and see in the context of the Bible what our present situation is based on the history behind us. So can we start there in Revelation chapter 13? Yes. Does that sound sure. good? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, Revelation 13. Let's just begin here with this picture that we have in Revelation 13 of beasts. There's two of them pictured there. There's a beast that comes out of the sea, and there's a beast that comes out of the earth. Mm -hmm. And in Bible prophecy, a beast represents a kingdom or a power, an earthly kingdom or power. And God is using this same type of imagery that we are familiar with. We often identify nations or kingdoms with symbols of beasts, like America is an eagle and China is a dragon and England is a lion and uh, Russia is a bear. So very familiar language for us. These two beasts in Revelation chapter 13, these two uh, earthly powers come up from different places. Now, the first one comes up out of the sea, which represents peoples, nations, multitudes, and tongues, a populated area of the world, according to Revelation 17, 15. So you've got Daniel 7, 17 and 23 that tell us a beast represents an earthly power. You've got Revelation 17, 15 that tells us that waters represent peoples, nations, multitudes, and tongues. This first beast we've identified prophetically as the religious power of the papacy, Roman 
the Roman power of the papacy, which rose up in the sequence of Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and pagan Rome. It sat, it, it, it occupies the seat of pagan Rome. When pagan Rome fell in 476, papal Rome rose up out of the ashes of that pagan system, and it established itself as a world power, a viable world power. That power lasted for about 1260 years, from 538 to 1798. When I say lasted, I don't mean it's no longer around, of course it is, but with strong civil authority. It, mm. it began reigning in 538 and it received a deadly wound in 1798. Now with that history in our background, let's just read Revelation chapter 13 and verse 10. Revelation 13 verse 10, here's what it says. He that leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He that kills with the sword will be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. This is describing what happened in 1798. Berthier and the French government went into Rome and took the Pope captive. They led him into captivity where he eventually died, February of 1798. And that is what the Bible calls in Revelation 13, 3, a deadly wound. A wound that would eventually be healed when the power, the civil power of the papacy is restored. Now, the papacy wasn't vanquished completely. It still maintained its ecclesiastical power and authority, mm -hmm. but its civil power was wounded. Mm -hmm. Now, in that context, 1798, we see something really interesting happening. And this is going to be clue number one that identifies the United States in Bible prophecy. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that clue is that it arose at the right time. Right when the papacy was going down, another nation was coming up. Notice verse 11 of Revelation chapter 13. And another, I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. So here we have a power that is rising up right when the papacy is going down. 1798 is when the papacy went down, and 1776 is when we began to arise. Now, of course... America didn't gain its independence for another eight years. It was in war, at war with the British from 17, uh, 1773 or so, I mean, 75 or so, till 1773 and 1774, it was, or 84, 83, 84, it was all clear. So we have the rise of America. In fact, it even fought another battle with the British in 1812 to about 1815. But it's coming up as this other power is going down. The other clue that's really uh, significant here is that it arose in the right place. Notice what it says here, it arose out of the earth. That's a less populated area of the world. The waters represent peoples, nations, multitudes, and tongues. Mm -hmm. The earth would represent a less populated place of the world. Then clue number three, it's depicted as another beast. That means it's a new nation. The United States broke away from England and all of its European roots and eventually became a new nation, a separate power. Then clue number four, it is a, a democratic republic. This second beast has two horns, but there's no crowns on them. There's crowns on the horns of the first beast. There's 10 horns with crowns. There's no crowns on the second beast. So it's a, right. it's a new democratic, democratic republic. Clue number five, and this is really the one that takes us to the time in which we live. It says there in verse 12 that it would exercise all the power of the first beast before him and cause the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So we could say without hesitation here that there's never been a time in history as far as we know it when America has been so uh, completely able to fulfill this aspect of the prophecy. Mm -hmm. It's worldwide dominance, it's worldwide strength, though that is waning somewhat. Mm -hmm. And then number six, Notice in verse 11, it's a lamb-like power. Now, in Bible prophecy, especially here in Revelation 13, lamb-like symbolizes Jesus. The whole book of Revelation begins by identifying the lamb as Jesus Christ who was slain. So this talks about Christian qualities. This new power was to be a power that had Christian qualities, a nation that exuded from its foundation, its roots, the principles of liberty and freedom, religious liberty and freedom and civil liberty and freedom. Jesus Christ came to set us free, to restore in us the freedom of choice, according to John 8, 36. And then number seven, this is the final clue. 
This power is going to change in character from a lamb to a dragon. It's going to have two horns like a lamb, but it's going to speak like a dragon. And of course, the nation speaks through its legislative body. And so this prediction of Bible prophecy that the nation of America is going to, that once uh, uh, embraced religious freedom, freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, it was now going to become a persecutor specifically of God's commandment keeping people, as we'll see when we compare this with uh, Revelation 12 and verse 17. So one point that I think is really important for our viewers right now, um, Danny, Ryan, Yvonne, to, to recognize as we go into this program, and that's this. The United States rose to power when there was another kingdom, the papacy, that was wholly Christian and controlling the world with its Christianity. And the United States broke free from that. We're not going to do that. But it also rose to power when there was another kingdom, i.e., atheist France that was seeking to throw God off, to be completely secular and to have no religious boundaries whatsoever. The United States walked right between those two powers. It did not force people to worship God. It did not force Christianity on people. And at the same time, it did not throw God off altogether. That is the root. That is the history. That's the foundation of this country. And tonight, as we talk about, is it important or is it uh, right for Christians to enforce morality, we're going to have to walk right between those two extremes, just like our founding fathers did in 1776 and onward. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Ryan, right before you do, for those of you at home, if you would like to email the uh, questions in, uh, let's see, I think we can do that. should put it up on the screen. You can email your questions and uh, uh, live at 3abn.tv and they'll bring them out to us in a bit. We're going to try to get through as much as we can. It may be a while before we get to the questions, but at least you'll be, we're going to be first come, first served. We already have a few, so what we'd like you to do is call in your questions, your comments. Thank you, James. That was very clear mm -hmm. and uh, very helpful. Ryan, what do you want to add to that? I don't know what to add. I mean, that was, that was pretty much <laughs> Revelation 13 in like 15 minutes. Um, no, I mean, just to, just to echo what he said, I think it's, it's spot on. You see this first beast going down in 1798. You see the second beast coming up around the same time. There's no other nation that fits the biblical description than that of the United States of America. It's when you get into these latter, chapter, or latter verses of Revelation 13, more specifically Revelation 12 and onward, where you see this second beast exercising all the authority of the first beast. This, this kingdom or this nation that was essentially set up uh, as, uh, as when John saw it, he described it as being lamb-like, Christ-like, with Christ-like principles, uh, a Christ-like character, at least in the beginning, begins to take on a change over time in which it eventually begins to speak as a dragon, which we've hmm. already mentioned. Um, I find that very interesting because I believe we're living in those times. I believe that our nation in, uh, within the past couple of decades has has begun to show through its legislation and uh, through the nature of, it, of its changing morals that are very mm -hmm. much shifting in a different direction, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. the, the spiritual temperature of this nation is screaming dragon. Uh, mm -hmm. The devil mm -hmm. is, is at, um, he is working harder than ever before to set the stage for the mm -hmm. final events of Bible prophecy. Mm -hmm. In 1984, um, I didn't know anything about television. I had sang on it and traveled and my daughter and I used to go, but uh, I would always say, Lord, where are we as Seventh-day Adventists in the media? Uh, shouldn't we be the heads and not the tails? If we have an end time message and the three angels messages, we have an end times message for an end times people. Why aren't we out there on television, on radio, worldwide getting this message out? I always, you know, I thought about that and the Lord impressed me this in uh, November, November of 1984. I want you to build a television station. Now this meant very little to me at the time. I'm just now understanding it after almost 40 years later is why I'm bringing it up. But I want you to build a television station that will reach the world with an undiluted Three Angels messages, one that would counteract the counterfeit. I, when I heard that, I said, all I heard was counteract the counterfeit. So at that time, I said, wow, we started going to churches. We're going to build this television station, reach the world, and we're going to uh, counteract uh, uh, Jim and Tammy Baker. We're going to counteract, you know, Jimmy Swagger. We're going to counteract TBN. We're going to give the truths about the Ten Commandments and the Sabbath. And I went about three or four weeks to different churches, and one night I had a dream. And in this dream, I was out in an apple orchard, and I was talking to God. I didn't see him. It was just me and him. 
And these apples were like none I've ever seen. They were this big around, beautiful red ripe. Their trees were so heavy laden that they were hanging down like this so I could just walk over and pick all these apples. So I said, Lord, what's this mean? And what the Lord impressed me, and I have to paraphrase because the way that the best way I could, I can't ever say what God said exactly, but, but other words in my humanness, what he said to me was your, your mission is not to go counteract people who are giving the gospel, no matter what that person is like. So, and, and it took me, wait, what do you mean? Because what happened is he says, my word will not return into me void. Mm -hmm. So I decided after that, if I hired an atheist actor, to do nothing but read the Bible 24 seven, there would be people watch it and come to Jesus because mm -hmm. it's not about the messenger. It's about the message. Mm -hmm. So Amen. that taught me, okay, my job is not to go out now and try to talk about these ministries. The ripe red apples, the Lord presented to me represents people who have already come off of drugs and alcohol, who have already accepted me. They are red ripe apples ready to be plucked to give them the end time message, the three angels messages to the world. Mm -hmm. So here I'm trying to fight people who, because they're given the word, maybe not always correct, but people have been touched by it, blessed mm -hmm. by it. So now that part I understood, but all these years, one you've given undiluted three angels messages, one that would counteract the counterfeit. Now, when you look at all the churches and all the Christian churches, Protestant churches, Catholic churches, I can't think of any other ones giving the three angels messages as their focus. Hmm. Hmm. So if it's to give an undiluted three angels messages, that must mean there's a diluted one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Absolutely. I mean, that's what it yes. means, but I didn't Absolutely. understand that at the time. Now I have to confess to you, I was a carpenter by trade. I could argue with you about the Sabbath. I could argue, and I'm saying this, argue with about, we say argue, you say argue, we'd argue with you, <laughs> but we'd argue with you about, about the Sabbath and we can argue about the state of the dead. I could argue with you about these things, but to, as far as really knowing and understanding Daniel Revelation, I didn't at that time. I was 33 years old, so why would the Lord impress me? So I knew it wasn't something that I'd heard before because I didn't even know what it meant. I want you to give an undiluted three angels messages. I'm finally understanding because we're at the point in earth's history that I'm seeing that, you know, we've been looking and, and, and talking about all these other churches that are getting away from the commandments of God, teachers that are false teachers and false preachers. And suddenly it's occurred to me, we have those two. Mm -hmm. All right. All we right. have those two. All right. We have those two. <laughs> So how can that be if we know what's going on? So I'm going to get onto a topic here that's very, very controversial, but I got my, my strong men here to, to uh, help us. We have our strong men here to help that's us right. with this. But one of the things that's going around, and I've talked to a number of pastors about this, and it's, it's, it's I don't want to say popular, but it's being more and more accepted, is that there are people who are standing up and they're saying that, talking about, first of all, the, the, and we're going to talk about that tonight. What's this new thing of Project 2025? 2025, yeah. The white nationalist, they're talking about, now they say nationalist, but when you really hear them. Christian nationalist. Well, yeah, I'm saying what people write me when yeah. they say, you're a white nationalist, you know. Oh, okay. And so, so, well, I'm a Christian, and, you know, they'll say, you're, you're a, a white Christian nationalist then, but you fit the mold of a, of a Republican, white Christian nationalist, you know, mm. so on, you know, whatever else. So, well, I'm not really, I can say tonight, I can't speak for you all, but Yvonne and me, we're independents. So we don't really go with either side or the other. Do we have tendencies, certain things we agree with? Uh, yes, there's certain, and maybe even on both sides, but there's some things we can talk about later on, but we're, we are not on either side. So I feel like we can step back and get a better picture because I don't have an agenda. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking politics, I don't have an agenda, but so you have people saying that what is happening in America as I even saw the other night on Facebook, a guy was writing and he said, it's going to be the, the white uh, nationalist uh, Republicans and it's going to be Donald Trump who brings in the national Sunday law. I believe he's going to get back in and he's going to bring about the national Sunday law. Now this was an Adventist. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying now how in the world do we get that we think we're so smart 
that we know prophecy so well, we can even name names of who's going to bring in a national <laughs> Sunday law. So for my little bit of reading, I'm not a scholar by any means, but it says the United States of America. I didn't see it said the Democrats uh, are going to bring in, you know, the Sunday law. I don't see it says the Republicans are bringing in. I think it's that, that horn represents the United States of America. So that would seem to me that it would be the country as a whole, that there'll be some compromises, some going forward. But what I wanted to talk about, so I'm throw a bunch out, you guys, and then you run with it. You jump in when you want. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I'm hearing is, and it's very popular right now, that as America, we, we call it, it, it came out of the earth, that it spake as a dragon, that the teaching is that it's been, it's always spoke as a dragon. Because of slavery, it's always spoke as a dragon. And yet, I don't find that to be true when I look back and we use sometimes Adventists, some of you aren't, but we look back at some of our prophetic, what we believe is pr prophetic information given to us. And I went back and looked and see what Ellen White says about it. And she says, this is the most uh, the blessed country, uh, you know, on earth. And I think most of us mm -hmm. know that. So I think we're heading into, and you said that a few minutes ago, Brother Ryan, mm -hmm. we see signs of a dragon coming, but to look back, and so somebody said, you're a nationalist. I said, well, I am. Uh, I looked it up in the dictionary to see what it says. It's mm -hmm. somebody who supports your country. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I grew up in America. So if I watched the Americans play basketball in the Olympics, I'm rooting for the Americans. When we were at war, I'm rooting for the Americans. So if that's <laughs> nationalist, I am. And if the God and country and family, if that wants to put me somewhere on some side of politics, you can do that if you want to. <laughs> but but that's, that's not where I am. But what I'm seeing is, is it's very popular right now, and I'll tell you why I, I, I think we have to talk about it. It'd be interesting to see what you guys say. But when you believe and you're taught that America has always spoken as a dragon and you're a minority, and it's over slavery, then you have no respect for a country. Mm -hmm. You'll have no type of, you, you, other words, mm -hmm. everything is bad about this country and nothing you could do would ever satisfy you because this has always been the devil's country because he's always been in charge of it. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. I believe that's a lie. And I think that that is, will cause division within the church. And so I would like to hear you guys talk about that. Mm -hmm because mm -hmm. you mentioned the other day it's not really about race, but yet we're making it race, current, current uh, culture, and politics is what's causing this division. But I'm, have you guys heard that, people yeah. talking about mm -hmm. yeah. that? So if yeah. I would like to hear what each of you think yeah. about when it says and it spoke as a dragon, how, when, and where mm -hmm. will this happen, and how do we know when it happened? Well, for sure we are divided over race, right? And I know from my own experience that this country has shaped my history. I was born on Camp Pendleton, um, United States Marine Corps base. My mom was white, my dad was black. Negroid is what it says on my birth certificate. Mm -hmm. And at 10 months of age, my mom took me to England because she didn't want me to be raised in this country because she felt like the, well, this was before Martin Luther King and the freedoms of the mm -hmm. 60, late 60s. And so she raised me there, and I remember as a young man, when I was about 11 years old, we came back to America, and at 16, I had a choice between going back to England with my mother, or which she moved back to England, or staying here, and it was such a simple choice. And it, you know, with all that we had gone through as a family, because my dad and mom would never be able, were never able to stay together because he was black and she was white, there was no question in my mind that America was the best place to live. And I never regretted that decision. It was a place of liberty. It was a place of freedom. Yes, there was racism. Yes, there were difficulties. There were things that we needed to work through as a nation. And you're going to find that in every nation. But the principles, the foundational principles of liberty and freedom were intact, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what allowed me to prosper in this country, those freedoms, those principles that uh, are established in this prophecy in Revelation chapter 13, those uh, principles of liberty and freedom. So I know as a minority, I know as someone who is from a mixed uh, race that that is half black and half white, I know that America is a great place to live. Even in relation to Europe, mm -hmm. it's a great place to live. And I think that when you look at Revelation chapter 13, what you're looking at is a progression from where we were as a nation. And of course, 
We started in 1776. It took us eight years to get independence. And then we had to fight again in 1812. In 1807, the British did away with slavery with Wilbur Wilberforce, uh, William Wilberforce. And but we had a strong contention in the South that was against it. But, you know, coming into 1863, when we did uh, sign the Emancipation Proclamation and hundreds of thousands of white people died to free the slaves, we have continued to progress from there. When you're looking at racism, a lot of it happens to be in certain areas of the United States because those people didn't want to give up the slave trade like the northern half of the United States did. And as you move further and further, it gets better and better. And there's more and more freedom and liberty coming out of the principles of the foundation of this country. And as soon as you start doing away with those principles and those, those uh, foundational liberties that have been given us, freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, you know, freedom to, 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 to worship as we want or not worship at all, you begin to speak like a dragon. And that's exactly what we can see. You know, Ryan mentioned it earlier. We're seeing the, the, we're hearing the voice of the dragon coming in with the elimination of these freedoms. And a lot of these eliminate, a lot of this elimination is coming, unfortunately, under the, under the, auspices of racism when it's not racism at all. It might be racism in a sense that it's racism against white people. Unfortunately, that's what we're seeing developing now. And I, I know we're hitting some, some hot buttons here, mm -hmm. but this is what you we're seeing taking place in our I country can, right so now. They'll, people will be mad at me if I say that, so go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can say it and get away with it, but He's that's what I see sides, taking yeah. place in one sense. Uh, I feel bad that as a young person, I was divided between black and white. But when I became a Christian, all that went away. All I right. was proud to be black and I was proud to be white. I was all proud right. of my mother. I was proud of my father. I was a Christian now and I didn't have to hide any of that because in Christ, we're all the same. It doesn't matter if we're Jew or Gentile. It doesn't matter if we're slave or free. It doesn't matter if we're male or female. We're all the same in Christ. So it's really hard, I think, almost overwhelming for me to see this division taking place within our church. Mm -hmm. Okay, if it's in the world, but within our church, uh-uh, yeah. it's just not acceptable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to, to, make, to make these final events of Bible prophecy, especially what we're reading here in Revelation um, 11, Revelation 13, verses 11 and onward, to try to make this a race issue is just incredible to me. Um, again, we're not denying this, and I, I, I want to make this very clear. As a history major in college, I had to write a many a paper and, 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 mm. and give a many a debate topic on, on the, the, the history of the United States. And I want to just make this very clear as an American citizen. I love my country. I'm, I'm, an, I'm an American through and through, and I'm proud to be an American. Mm. I'm not proud of some of its history. I'm just mm. not. Mm. When I look back at some of those, the, the, when I read about the extreme cases of slavery that went on for a large chunk of the early part of this, this nation's history. That's a dark time that I'm not proud of as an American. But nonetheless, um, praise the Lord, we've, we've, we've grown out of that. We've come out of that. Things have changed. In fact, it's interesting that people, it can be said that there's more freedom in this country than there has been before. But what's interesting mm -hmm. is many people want to go back and say, well, there, you know, we say we're a Christian nation, but then there's slavery and there's all these bad things that we allowed and all these people that claim to be Christian allowed in this nation. Uh, but when, what's interesting is there was a sense, again, there might have been a flawed view of way to carry that, that Christianity out, but there was a very solid Christ-like Christian foundation and morals that was very much established in this nation. It's interesting that the more freedom that has been opened up for people, the morals have went the opposite direction. Mm. Mm. Because mm. when you give freedom, where there is true freedom, there's, that involves risk. Mm -hmm. Risk of people not taking that responsibility of the freedom they've been given to exercise it in such a way that they have the freedom to choose to serve God or to not serve God, to, to do that which is right or to not do that, that which is right. What's interesting to this is me, or what, what, what's interesting to me is this. When you get into Revelation 13, you look at these two horns. Uh, I want to read something from Spirit of Prophecy, Volume 4, page 27 here. It says, uh, actually, this is 277. So Spirit of Prophecy, Volume 4, page 277. She says this. She says, And the lamb-like horns, emblems of innocence and gentleness, well represented the character of our government, okay, 
as expressed in its two fundamental principles, republicanism and Protestantism. So what do those two horns represent? The two principles on which this nation was built, republicanism and Protestantism. Now, don't be, uh, don't be taken, by, uh, taken off by the, the word republicanism. It's not talking about the Republican Party. Right. It's talking about the, mm -hmm. remember, uh, right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States mm -hmm. of America unto the republic for which it stands. What's a republic? Our nation was, this, our, the, the nature of our uh, government was a democratic uh, uh, process that was built up on a republic and the republic meaning it's giving the power to the people. Mm -hmm. So when you mm -hmm. go over to Europe during the dark ages, it was the papacy that was enforcing religion on people and oppressing people in a pharisaical way with religion mm -hmm. to the point that again, more than 50 million people over a period of time in the dark ages perished because of an enforcement, a, a dragon-like enforcement of religion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This new nation that comes up out of the earth, now the, it's created, it rises up out of the earth and it's established opposite of, at first of that beast over the sea uh, that rised up out of the sea among the peoples, among the nations, among the multitudes and masses. This nation establishes, says, we don't want to be like that. We want to, we want to establish a nation that's built up on uh, republicanism, which is giving the power now to the people not to a dictatorship or a few you know, elite people that's going to misuse and abuse their power and put the power of the people, put the power in the people's hands and to bring about freedom of religion, which brought about the Protestant movement. Now, here's what's interesting. Let's fast forward. When you give the people power now, and that's a great thing, but if those people that are given the power are not now living according to those biblical principles as mm -hmm. was established in the beginning, but they fall away from it. They push religion out. They push Christ out. They push the commandments out. Now the nature, the spiritual, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the character of the body of people is now going to tell their, their, uh, their leaders, their, their uh, uh, legislators how to, what to pass and what to do. That's what we're seeing here in terms of this, this, this conversation of Christian nationalism and this whole conversation of now being this, this second beast speaking as the first dragon or exercising all the authority. What we're seeing is the power of the people who have now pushed religion out, who have pushed Christ out, who are now basically abandoning the law of God. Mm -hmm. This nation that once was lamb-like that's starting to speak like a beast. It's coming from the power of the people that is pressing their legislators to now start to pass laws that go against God's morals and go against God's standards. Mm. Wow. So now we're in this big scenario where it's like, wait a second, the church is now being affected. That's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. At what point does the church allow culture to dictate its principles and where they stand. Right. When you allow the culture of the people who are not reflecting the character of the lamb, but now the character of the dragon, telling their legislators to pass laws that fly in the face of God's commands, mm -hmm. and, 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 and you're allowing that to happen, and the church is now being oppressed, and not oppressed, but being uh, influenced strongly by the culture, mm -hmm. now we have to speak up and say, wait a second, we had separation of church and state, but now it seems like we're allowing the culture to come move in slowly, like a almost like a cancer, like a, mm -hmm. a, a, a like a, yes. like a virus. Mm -hmm. It's coming in slowly, and it's starting mm -hmm. to slowly but surely. Uh, this this dragon like mentality is bleeding into the church mm -hmm. to have people compromising mm -hmm. the plain truth of God's word yes. Yes. in a free country mm -hmm. yeah. more than ever before, mm -hmm. with more freedoms mm -hmm. more than yeah. ever before. Mm -hmm. I love it. I want to go back to. Well, you said that, mm -hmm. that spoke, you know, as, as, a, as, as a dragon. And I look at this America's journey with slavery, with race, as a Christian. Let's say that I'm not a Christian, but today I become a Christian. I'm still going to have some ugly things in my life. But as I go mm -hmm. farther and farther in my Christian walk, I'll become, become more like Christ. Well, mm -hmm. when it came to slavery, people was like, okay, finally we're getting it after, you know, so many years. Mm -hmm. But it's taken a tremendous amount, but it's not a stand on your face and just reject it mm -hmm. because what God doesn't, he, you know, sanctification, you know, is, is fine. That's a working of a lifetime. And God blessed this nation. But if we had stood up in the face and said, forget it, and the South won, no, slavery is here, I think God would have withdrawn his blessings. But he didn't because we've continued to move on. Mm -hmm. So now mm -hmm. for many years, you've got, you know, now you've got this lamb-like beast with that soft nature, that, you know, good nature with all the Christian principles. But then 
people want to say, and these same people that I've been listening to that's talking about, well, slavery is, mm -hmm. you know, it's always the United States spoken as a, as a dragon. Those same people are saying, well, what's happening is it's going to be the Christian right, you know, who brings the national mm -hmm. Sunday law. And as again, as I mentioned, some of them even name names. And so they're headed, this is the way it has to be. So mm -hmm. if people disagree, pe you know, people get really upset because well, you got people now on the other side saying, wait a minute, the left is ungodly, they're godless, and the right, the, so mm -hmm. in general, it seems to me what happened is that the country, you know, basically, as you said, Christian, though we had lots of faults and failures, but as things really begin mm -hmm. to go to pot, so to speak, maybe literally, the <laughs> pot back in the <laughs> 60s and 70s, mm -hmm. then the Christian leadership said, we got to stop this. Something's got to happen. So I'm old enough, and some of you are too, to remember Jerry Falwell and the mm -hmm. moral majority. <laughs> so Pat he Robinson. got millions mm -hmm. of people to follow him, we have got to make America get it back to a Christian nation. So mm -hmm. we are going to legislate laws, including a Sabbath rest, which he meant was a Sunday rest. Then mm -hmm. there came Pat Robertson. So this mm -hmm. was probably late 80s. So people said to me, yeah. man, you got some influence. Aren't you glad we got a, a Christian? You know, I could say a white Christian since everybody's making the race thing, but I won't. So you, we got a Christian, somebody you should really like. And this guy is going to run for president. And I think 3ABN, you all ought to stand behind it. You have to stand behind it. And I was a bad guy because I said no. That's I will right. not support mm. either one of those guys. Now, mm -hmm. I support what they do in giving the gospel. But what they're mm -hmm. wanting to do is they're wanting to turn this country into that speaking like a dragon right. because they want to legislate. So if I understand it right, what really makes will show that the country is speaking as a dragon is when they begin to legislate laws that are mm -hmm. anti God's laws. And, and, and on, on that same point, you know, we brought up the race issue earlier and, and not to return to that it's linger too long, but I just want to make a mention. It's interesting that, you know, I'm out, I'm out there preaching and I have many conversations with many people in the field. And it's amazing to me, the people that usually are crying this, you know, where, where, where we spoke as a dragon and it's all, making it a race issue. And, I, and again, I'm not denying that there's racism yeah, in this right. country both on ways. both sides, yeah. but it's so is it in every other country. Yeah. There was slavery. And I think J, Pastor James brought this out earlier. The United States of America is not the only country with a history of slavery. No. There are mm -hmm. dozens and dozens and dozens of other countries that Africa have a rich had history. Slaves. Africa enslaved their own people. Sold them to America. Yeah. And so, again, it, it, we just put the spotlight on America. And, and of course, because rightly so in this sense, because we're talking about Bible prophecy. But what's interesting is that the, 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 the nature of these people that are coming out and, and the points that they're making and trying to say that we can't take this one side because it seems to be about white nationalism and white supremacy. And these are the same individuals that tend to choose a side that are legislating laws that fly in the face of God's commandments. Yeah. Yeah. In other mm -hmm. words, people that yeah. support abortion, people that support homosexuality and all these other things. As an independent, I want to make this very clear because I know there's probably somebody right now that's like, oh, Ryan, they must be a Republican. I hate politics. <laughs> I despise politics. I've said it from the beginning of time. I, I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Christ-ublican or, or a Christocrat. I, I would rather say it like that. I'm, I'm a Bible-believing <laughs> Christian. I, I, don't, I do not get on the bandwagon of one or the other. At the end of the day, I'm all about the Bible. At the end of the day, I'm all about making sure that we as a people and as a church are sticking and adhering to a thus saith the Lord and not getting caught up in these cultural pressures that are causing us to choose sides yes. and then in choosing the sides. But what's happening is literally the spirit of the North and the spirit of the South. When you get over mm -hmm. to Daniel 11, I know Pastor, Pastor mm -hmm. uh, Rafferty probably might speak a little bit on this before we end tonight. When you get over to Daniel 11, there's this king of the north, this king of the south. The spirit of the north, the spirit of the south. You have basically uh, apostate Christianity versus atheism. And the devil's working both sides. Absolutely. The devil yeah. is working Ab both sides. Yeah. And people Absolutely. think, that, well, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a right Right, right wing person because this is the what this is the party that Jesus would choose. Mm -hmm. There's problems with the right wing. There's issues. Yeah. With, mm -hmm. the, the, the God's not in that. The devil's all up in that. Mm -hmm. And then for sure, when you get to the left, you see the devil in that. God's not in that. Yeah. So I want to make that very clear. We're not here to push politics or one side or the other. Right. But to get back to the Bible, we cannot get to the point where we make it issues about certain things that cause us to choose a side that fall, that flies in the face of God's commands and God's will yes. and God's will. Absolutely. And that's the whole point. Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely true. And, I, and I, so I have a different 
perspective on race because I I grew up during the civil rights era, mm -hmm. so I... You're, you don't look that old, honey. How am I doing? <laughs> okay, that's <laughs> really good. Okay. That, okay, you, okay, good. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> oh, goodness. And so I... Um, so I lived in Alabama for a while. I was from New York originally, and we moved to Alabama in 1960 because my dad went back to went back to school, Oakwood, and I went to Huntsville, and I I, I went into the town, and I I just experienced um, segregation. So I saw colored and white fountains. And my mother, who was very fair, could go into a restaurant. She'd bring the food out to us because we couldn't go in. So I I saw that. However, I've seen, too, how we've grown, and I'm really thankful. I, I love America. Mm -hmm. I'm very thankful to be an American. Mm -hmm. I see the issues that we have internally, you know, culturally. We have external and internal issues. Mm -hmm. So we can't say that, you know, I, I think we make so much of race, so much. It's just we have more melanin. It's a, it's a, we make such a big deal. <laughs> There's about, one race. You There's know one race, saying? different shades. It's, yes. By the way, you don't have yes. that much. Well, you. well, you know, but, but we, we all, we all have like that, we have cultural similarities and some cultural differences, but we should be Christians first. That's mm. right. That that's should be, right. that's, you know, that's when right. I think of you as my husband, I don't think my white yeah. husband, yeah. you are my husband because yeah. race is, Race, we make such a big deal out of it, and we don't really need to, especially as Christians. That is not to negate, hear me, please, because people will be saying, oh, she's, she's denying what's going on. I'm really not. We have, again, internal issues and external issues, mm -hmm. and the laws in this country are really well written now to, for equality. The execution of those laws sometimes faulty. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we do, we do have issues, again, internally and externally, but we need to be Christians first. That's and right. I had an epiphany about this with President Obama's second term, because the first term I volunteered for his campaign. She was a big time I, Democrat. I, I was. Well, I was a, an Obama supporter mm -hmm. because I really had never been involved mm -hmm. in politics. I was too. Well, and it was historical, and I was so, like, happy to yeah. see. I really never thought that we would, in my lifetime, we'd have a black president. Mm -hmm. But we did. It was and that exciting. Says, it I, was exciting. I'm a white guy. It I was, was excited. It, I loved his yeah. charisma, and I thought, yes, yes. It's I historical. love the way, the, thing, the way he spoke. And it was just like, man, there's a fresh new perspective. It was yes, awesome. Yes, it was. It, excited it, about it. It was exciting. Until we got further in. Until the second term. Mm -hmm. Then for the second term, I, I really, I, the Lord dealt with me. Why you, is that? Because you, his platform was? Well, he was really pushing the same, the same sex uh, marriage and. The second term. The second term. Mm -hmm. I didn't, the, the first term, he wasn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Had second he term, been doing he that the first term, I wouldn't have supported it. But, but the, for the second term, I could not support him. I couldn't vote at all. And I'm, I, having come out of the 60s, I'm a big proponent of voting mm -hmm. because people mm -hmm. died so that we could vote. Sure, sure. So I'm a big mm -hmm. proponent of voting. But as a Christian, what comes first? We have to ask right. ourselves mm -hmm. whether it's on the right or on the left, does our culture come first or does God come first? Does mm -hmm. his word come first? Mm -hmm. And it's, mm -hmm. it, sometimes it causes mm -hmm. you to have to make a really big decision. Absolutely. I'm, I'm all about mm -hmm. civil rights, freedoms, rights given to each and every person. Absolutely. We should never take away free will. But those, the, 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 the praising and the pushing and the, 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 the um, really preaching for those freedoms at the expense of the morals of God's law. Right. Mm -hmm. Where you have to turn a blind eye. Mm -hmm. to a thus saith the Lord and That's the very right. foundational law of God's government right. to get a freedom mm -hmm. over here for uh, an issue that is, is not to be taken lightly. Don't mm -hmm. want to take it lightly. But when yeah. you do it at that expense, that's when you have an issue. Yeah. That's right. And, and yes, we can, we can proclaim these freedoms, but never at the expense of God's moral law. And, and back, as I was Amen. saying, in, in the late 80s, and when you had the Falwells and Robertson, they seemed like nice guys. They were doing a lot of work. 
people coming to the Lord, but I could not support them. And I had Christians upset at me and say, you should do this. I said, no, because they, their intention is to break down the wall of separation of church and state because they want to legislate morality. And the, the church should not, and they're going to influence the government to legislate, you know, Mm-hmm. moral laws. And mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. there's there's no way they should be able to do that. In other words, it, which I really knew what it was going to be. It was going to be the fourth commandment. Mm-hmm. It was going to be not the last six commandments, but it's going to be the first four, which belong to God. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we can, we can legislate. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And we do. Every civilized nation d- d- literally, I, I think, supports the commandments, the last six of man's duty to man. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I can go kill you. I can go steal because somebody just wrote me earlier mm-hmm. and said, well, no country should ever, and no Christian ever be for a country who's legislating moral laws. And I said, right. well, I don't want to live in one who doesn't. <laughs> That's right. right. I mean, That's because right. now they're going to take everything you got. They can take your life, your wife, they can take everything else. And, and so, no. And there I, are some countries that don't yeah. legislate those last yeah. six commandments. Yeah. And people can just walk into your home and steal right. and take your mm. things and all that so, and never be uh, prosecuted for right. it. Wow. So what we're going to do, we're going to have to take mm. a break in just a moment. But I want to come back and, and continue because I felt like that I couldn't. This 20, 25 people are preaching. This is going to be it. This is a Sunday law. Now, we have to keep in mind, we've been preaching this, been told about it, warned about it probably for 140 years. It hasn't happened, but all along there's growth. All along, God is warning his people to watch what's happening so we can't get so caught up on one side or the other. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. But in my case, I have seen, and I know that the Christian nationalists, so to speak, I can't even hardly say the word, (laughs) some of those are, we're going to take over by force if we have to. Mm, yeah. And no, do you think I can support that as a Christian? Mm-mm. No, I don't care if they have all of the names. They, they call me white, Republican, white, you know, whatever, uh, whatever they want to call me. No, I, I don't identify with somebody who's trying to force people uh, against the go- yeah. laws of God. But right. now we've got to come back. We have to talk about the other side That's right. in just a moment of what's happening there and how it fits into and uh, so if you don't want to hear that side, you should not come back in just a minute. So we've got to give the whole truth. We'll there be back in just a minute. Welcome back to 3ABN Today Live. Thank you for joining us. Hope you're with us last hour. If not, you're getting in. We're a pretty hot topic tonight, but it's something I think we have to deal with as Christians. And you said it so eloquently a while ago, Yvonne, just a little bit ago. The Lord gave you an epiphany. You either have to serve the Lord or serve your culture. Mm -hmm. And you chose to serve the Lord. And so we've been talking about uh, the beast of Revelation 13. We've been talking about the, the two horns. We went through that quickly. If you didn't get to watch the first hour, you can, there's repeats on this and hopefully <laughs> you can go back and uh, what do you call that when you go back and get to... Watch it on your, demand. Watch yeah. it on demand. Watch you can go demand. back and watch it on demand. <laughs> but we were just talking about the right side of, of the political, um, I would say the arena right now. There's always been, but I'm just surprised because a lot of these people are young people that I'm James that I'm watching or seeing on Facebook and the preachers and some of these Adventists, they act like this Project 2025 is the first time that that anything's ever been a big push in America to pass a national Sunday law. And I'm thinking, I lived through Pat Robertson, you know, Pat, uh, Jerry Falwell, and there were numbers of other people too all along. There's always been these people pushing for that. It hasn't Mm -hmm. happened. Does it mean it won't? No. I have a very good feeling that it will. Do I know who it's, who's going to push it? And I'm going to ask these guys in a little bit, you think it's going to be from the Republicans or do you think it's going to be from the Democrats? Mm-hmm. Or do you think it's going to be from somebody falling out of the mm-hmm. sky? <laughs> but if there's a Sunday law coming, and so who's it going to... But I'm amazed at Adventists who will teach things because the undiluted three angels' messages mean we need to be careful what we're preaching when it comes to prophecy, lest we make void mm-hmm. the law of God. But I want to get back to, uh, she was talking about President Obama. 
being a black person and what that meant to her and to the country and how she voted for him. And so, but the second time around, his platform was, I'm going to support LGBTQ. We're going to take this and we're going to make this law of the land, same-sex marriage. Okay, somebody's saying, well, shouldn't people have a right to, so you're against this? Whatever the government does, that's the government. I can't speak for the government. I just have to say what the law of God says. Mm -hmm. So if the government says two people of the same sex can be married, I'm not going to go try to break it up, mm -hmm. right? That's not my job. My job is to tell people what the truth is. The government is one thing. God's people is another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have to concentrate. So that doesn't mean, no, we should never mistreat somebody that's of a different race, somebody that holds different views, people, the, the, the LGBTQ people. We love them and hope they love us too. It's, but we don't have to agree. And sometimes we can't agree. But now I look at so much stuff happening and people are putting so much emphasis. There are preachers who are, it seems like every time I turn on, all they're preaching about is this Sunday law that's coming and you need to be looking and, and watch this and watch that. And what it really hit mm -hmm. me and I want to talk about it some if the Lord doesn't change my mind at camp meetings soon. What I want to talk about is we can get so focused on something, and many of our preachers are in this church mm -hmm. even, we're so focused on what's going to happen in the future mm -hmm. that they forgot to cover the church behind them mm -hmm. because within the church, the termites are eating it away, if I can mm -hmm. use that term. Mm -hmm. the, the foundational pillars of the Seventh Adventist Church are being eroded away mm -hmm. because people are now in the back doors coming to affirmation of LGBTQ, is coming in abortion, all of these things. The, 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 um, I, I'm amazed at some of the, the lawlessness that some of our people, and I've talked about the right a while ago, but some on the left support and some of the ungodliness that's happening. And so it's like the ones on the right is like, can't the ones on the left see this and ones on the left? Well, can't the ones on the right see this? And that's why we all need an epiphany, I think, as Yvonne had to say, Lord, where would you have me to be? Because for me, so here you've got Adventists, they're so concentrating. So my question would be, do you really think that the devil is just sitting here twiddling his thumbs, twirling his thumbs, watching all of us because we're so smart. We know exactly every move he's going to make and we know how to get it. What he's going to do, this focal point, the, na the National Sunday Law, that's the big thing. And he's going to not try to go in and destroy the rest of the church because when mm -hmm. the rest of the church, and this is basically we talked about the right on the left side, why I don't support it, is because of same-sex marriage and abortion that they seem to support. And now, at first, when it happened a few years ago, I, I would talk to people on the Democratic side, even Adventists, they'd say, oh, well, we don't believe in that stuff, but we support everything else, or we hate Trump or whatever. Nowadays, they're saying, well, a woman should have a choice. These are Seventh-day mm -hmm. Adventists, many of them. Mm -hmm. A woman should have a choice. Mm -hmm. Now, if a woman has that choice and the government says she can have it, she can have it. I'm not against it. I won't try to stop it. My job is just to say, look, if you do do that and you're going to have a baby, you know, think about adopting it to do whatever. There's things we can do as Christians, but if no matter what mistake is made, we're going to love those people. We're going to love them right in. When they need us to be there, we should be there. This is all about love. So it's not a condemnation, but mm -hmm. when you say that start speaking and you've said in the last 10 or 20 years when it starts speaking as a dragon is when the United States of America starts legislating mm -hmm. laws against the commandments of God. Right. That's why I said right. and she can tell you that if I'm telling the truth or not, 2015 when mm -hmm. same-sex marriage became law of the land, what did mm -hmm. I say? The Holy Spirit began to withdraw from the earth. Mm -hmm. Look in the last nine years and tell me, those of you older, that you've ever seen such moral degree degradation and moral mm -hmm. decline yeah. as you've mm -hmm. seen. And I haven't seen that much in the last 50 years as I've seen in the last nine mm -hmm. years. Now, why would that be? Okay. Mm -hmm. Here's my opinion. Because the devil's smarter than that. Again, go mm -hmm. ahead. We'll let you just chase after that. But if I can destroy the church on the inside, when mm -hmm. a Sunday law comes, nobody's going to be standing up and mm -hmm. saying, we're standing up for this because you've already given way to, to the breaking of God's Ten Commandments through 
through the adultery commandment, the sixth and seventh, and the murder commandments. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. what's happening on the left side of it. Can I support mm -hmm. that? Absolutely mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. I preached about that once, and people wrote me by the hundreds, Brother James, <laughs> and said, you got to quit talking politics. And I said, I didn't. Wow. I talked about, I talked about it, breaking God's Ten Commandments. No, you Amen. just did that. I said, look, if your politics are in the way of the Bible, That's you might right. want to change your <laughs> politics. When your politics starts dictating the law of God or changes of, of of my religion, or in this case, the Word of God, then that's when it becomes yeah. an issue. Right. Because, you got to talk about that's right. it. Right. Because all of this yep. is really simple, and I'll wind up and let you guys take this. So, all of this is really simple. Richard Bland told me once, and I think this is so important, he was United Prison Ministry. He said, There are people, believe it or not, here in America that are prisoners, when we go visit them, they've never read a Bible. The only time they've heard Jesus' name is when it's been profaned by their parents or people they know. Mm -hmm. They know nothing about the Bible. So he said, there's been times we give them a Bible. Not everybody's going to read it, but some say, I want to read it. He says, I go back six months later, and most of the prisons have chaplains who will come in on Sunday mornings and do worship. Richard said, when I would go in to visit this person, I hadn't seen him in six months. He's been reading the Bible. He says, I want to ask you a question. These other guys couldn't answer it. Why do, why do we have worship services on Sunday? And Richard's mm -hmm. like, what? He goes, well, why would they have worship services on Sunday? And Richard said, well, why shouldn't they? Of mm -hmm. course, knowing the answer, mm -hmm. he, he said, well, I've read the Bible, been reading the Bible. Saturday is the seventh day of the Sabbath mm -hmm. of the Lord. Why mm -hmm. do churches, mm -hmm. why do people go to church on Sunday? So here's my point. Without any outside influence, you give someone a Bible and they read it, they will, and we know this as Adventists, you would only come up with the saying that the commandments are valid, all 10 of them, exactly. and you would yeah. worship on the seventh day of the week. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's, that's, I mean, we know that for sure. Now, the same goes for same-sex marriage, the LGBTQ. You give somebody a Bible that's never read a Bible, they have no outside influence by culture, race, politics, anything else. You give them a Bible, six months later, you come back and they're reading, I will guarantee you none of those will say, you know, I think the LGBTQ, I think this is good. No, they've read Acts or Romans and, and Corinthians and, and Deuteronomy. They've, they've read, when you read it, only an outside influence would get you so confused mm -hmm. that you would try to mm -hmm. make void the law of God. Mm -hmm. So it's the same way with abortion. You're not going to read a Bible without being affected by culture, by race, by politics, and say that abortion is okay. So for those of you who are Adventist Christians or Christians, period, uh -huh. and you want to say, well, you know, actually, I think it's okay, and we need to do this, uh -huh. do that. What's the Bible say? Right. Mm -hmm. you, we need to get to the point to say, what does the Bible say on this? That's so right. to me, it's, it's whether you're breaking, looking at, well, we want to stand up for God's uh -huh. commandment. We want to be the last ones, and then to Sunday law, we're going to be there, and all the while, your church is breaking the commandments, mm -hmm. all the, every, morally everything is going down, mm -hmm. then that Sunday law is going to mean exactly right. Right. zero. Mm -hmm. And, and that, mm -hmm. I'm going to give them, turn it over to Pastor James in just a moment for comments. I, I want to back up what you're saying with some t statistics. Can mm -hmm. I do right. that? Good. Okay, mm -hmm. because we expect the world, non-believers, to have an opinion that does not reflect that of God right. or the mm -hmm. Bible. We expect mm -hmm. that. It's not like we're looking at the, the world, the, the, you know, the atheistic or agnostic world, the non-believing world, and going, oh, what? You know, they, you know, they believe the heck? No, we're not. What's, what's got us all riled up <laughs> is when you look at the church and you go, wait yeah. a second, these brothers and sisters proclaim that they or declare that they believe in God, they believe in the Bible, yet they, they're siding with or joining sides or promoting an agenda that supports these very non-biblical things. So here's what's interesting. Let me give you some interesting statistics. And they've been statistics. encouraged by yes. secular people yes. that have nothing to do with being So in other Christian. words, the culture and yeah. that atheistic spirit is affecting yeah. the professed believers. That's right. So here, let me give you some statistics. In 19, er, 1955, 92% of America was Christian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In 1955, right. as recent uh, poll is, and I got these statistics offline, so from various sources, but f but in polls and surveys as recent as 2020 showed that now today America 64. is 64 to 68 yeah. percent Christian. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, there's a big drop there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now here's what's interesting. Continue on doing a little bit more research. A poll as recent as 2018 shows that less than half of Americans, 49 percent, believe that all the Ten Commandments are still relevant today. 
Mm. Yeah. Now, again, look at that number, 64 to 68, whether or not, whether it's 64, 68, it's still the majority. You could say the majority yeah. of America today mm. is still Christian or professed Christian. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. But when you get over here to this poll, notice this, less than half of Americans, 49% believe that all the 10 commandments are still relevant. That means mm. some of those professed Christians don't believe that all of the 10 commandments are relevant. Oh, but it gets better. And I have a, oh, go ahead. I it gets better. I have a statistic. I'll let you get, we may have the same one. I say, I say it gets better. It gets worse. Yeah, actually. it gets right. worse. Okay. A survey by Kelton Research found 80% of American respondents could name the Big Mac's primary ingredient to all beef patties, but less than six in 10 knew the commandment, thou shalt not kill. Okay. Wow. Less than yeah. half of the respondents, 45%, could recall the commandment, honor thy father and mother, but 62% knew the Big Mac had a pickle. Mm -hmm. Wow. Bobby and Peter, the least recalled names from the fictional Brady Bunch family, were remembered by 43% of the respondents, topping the 34% mm -hmm. who knew remember the mm -hmm. Sabbath and 29% recalling do not make false idols. But here's what's interesting. You talked about LGBTQ. Get mm -hmm. this. Recent polls show that more than 72%, and this was based off of the census, recent census records, mm -hmm. more than 72% of American citizens believe that LGBTQ movement is a great thing. It's a positive thing. Now, we mm -hmm. said earlier that a republic yeah. is a power of the people mm -hmm. telling the legislators what to legislate, right? Mm -hmm. In most cases, that's the idea. And what we're seeing here is that if the majority of America, 68%, is Christian, that means many of those professed believers are in this 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 uh, percentage, 72% of Americans that believe that LGBTQ is a good thing. Mm -hmm. So what are we? What are the statistics showing? They're showing that we're living in a free country that was established on Christian principles, of the majority of which claims to be a people of the Bible or a people of belief in Christ in the Bible, but many of those who have compromised mm -hmm. in the area of what God's Word actually right. says and mm -hmm. promotes. And, and mm -hmm. the, 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 the uh, survey that I read, and I'm trying to find out which one it was, but it says out of the 64 to 68 percent of Americans who now uh, say they're Christian, only 6 percent say that they allow their Christianity to affect their lifestyle, their daily wow. living. Mm, so wow. you only have 6% out of 64, wow. when as you said, 1955 was 92%. Mm -hmm. So now mm -hmm. only 6% say everything I do is, is surrounded by, you know, it is my belief in the Bible, my belief in God, so much so that I'll let it affect my life and how I live and my morals mm -hmm. and what have you. So what we're seeing here, then we'll give it over to you, James and Yvonne. What we're seeing here is that the early church, the early Christian church was so on fire, so much zeal, so much commitment to the Lord, willing to give their lives unto death if necessary. That changed the world. When those people went out and after the, the resurrection of Christ and Christianity began to spread, they changed the world. Today, the church that we like call the remnant church, today the world has changed us. Mm -hmm. That's, 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 yeah. that's, mm -hmm. that's how we're in a mess. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the world has changed us. But before we're over this, we're going to talk about good news and how we, how all of this can change Amen. and mm -hmm. turn Amen. into something good. But brother James. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to take us to a Bible verse in Revelation 13, because I think one of the big, big misunderstandings about the mark of the beast and end time prophecy being fulfilled is this idea that it's only going to come from the right, that it's only going to come from religious people. And it's true in a sense that we're going to see a swing. We, we're always going to see swings in our country, and that's what Satan's all about. He's all about two extremes and pulling us back from one extreme to the other. That's what we see in the papacy, one extreme, and in atheism in France specifically, but secularism today, the other extreme, God wants us to go right between the two. Revelation chapter 13, look here at verse 16. It's talking about what's going to happen in the enforcement of the mark of the beast. And it says, he's going to call all, cause all, small, great, rich, poor, free and bond, receive a mark in their foreheads. Mm -hmm. Did I read that right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, hand, the right hand, right hand. Oh, the right hand. Right. Did mm -hmm. I leave that part out? Yes. That's what we're doing when we say it's all going to come from the religious right. We're leaving out the right hand. The forehead is what you believe. A lot of Christians are going to go along with this because they believe it. But guess what? Jerry Falwell never had enough support. Pat Robinson never had enough support. They have to have secular support. 
And you know where that comes? That comes from the economic pressure. There are going to be a lot of people who don't give a, anything about worshiping God. They don't believe it in their minds, but they go along with it. The hand means they're going along with it in their actions. If you go to Pakistan today, you're going to find that that Islamic Republic does not close for business on Friday, the day of prayer for Muslims. It closes for business on Sunday. And so do many Muslim countries, except maybe Saudi Arabia, yeah. because they are independently wealthy. But if you look it up on the internet, you're going to find most Muslim countries close for business on Sunday. Why? economic pressure. Mm. We're going to see this in this country. We're seeing it right now. In Europe, a huge push for Sunday observance from trade unions, a huge push for Sunday observance from people who are into the climate. Climate warriors want Sunday as a day of rest to, to close everything down so the climate can recover. This is what we're talking about here in Revelation chapter 13. It's not just people who are religious, who are religiously right. It's also people who are very secular. Let me give you one example. In Oregon, where I used to live, there was a real uh, downturn economically in 2008. You remember the bubble burst, the economic mm -hmm. bubble went out, the carpet went out from underneath us. And I think Oregon was hit, I, I, if I remember correctly, they were the worst state in the union when that happened in 2008. And the car dealerships all got together and they wrote a letter to the legislators and they said, we would like you to enforce Sunday laws. They were already on the books, blue laws, they weren't enforced. The guy that let out on this owned a car dealership in Portland big car dealership, about 20 or 30 years earlier, and I might be getting off on this, but I've got the article, he was the one that actually began opening his business, his car business, on Sunday. The police would come by, get this, and they would fine him because he wasn't supposed to be open on Sunday because of Sunday mm -hmm. laws. And he would pay the fine, and then he would reap in a whole bunch of profit from selling cars when everyone else was closed. So all the other dealerships started opening, and pretty soon the police gave up. That same man now, at this economic downturn in 2008 was writing a letter, leading all these car dealers to write a letter to the legislature to enforce Sunday laws that were already on the books. Why? Because he was a Sunday keeper? Because he was a Christian? Because he was a believer? No, because of economic pressures, because of economic downturn. Now, mm. look at our country. Look at how many trillions of dollars were in debt. I think it's over $34 uh, trillion right now as we speak and get and climbing higher. Look at the pressure that's going to come. Look at how hmm. everything that we're doing is leading us to a place where, we, where, where our economy is going to completely collapse. Mm -hmm. And once that happens, everything's going to be in a control situation, digital cur currency, for example. And we're going to have to go along with stringent laws that have to do not just with religion, but also with our society in general. Uh -huh. That's what Revelation mm -hmm. chapter 13 is telling them. Mm -hmm. A lot of these people are going to do it because they're religious, but other people are going to do it simply because of the economic pressure. So be warned, seven-day Adventists, be warned Christians when you're looking at the danger on the right, and that only you are myopic. You're only looking mm -hmm. out of one eye. You need to have that Right. vision on the left and recognize that both of these sides are going to unite together in the end. That's what Revelation 13 is telling us. Absolutely. Both of these sides are going to unite together just like the Pharisees and Sadducees united to persecute Christ. It's going to be the same way in the end of time. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Great point. Mm -hmm. Great point. Mm -hmm. Ryan? Mm. You know, I just, I, I support every bit of that. I, we have seen recently as nine years ago where Pope Francis released his encyclical um, back in 2015, uh, Laudato Si, which actually in that he makes an appeal for all Christians to get back to observing Sunday due to the fact that we need to take that one day in seven to lower, you know, carbon emissions and get back yes. to a greener earth. And, and so just That's to right. further support what, what Pastor James is saying, the devil has a multifaceted plan yes. to bring in every single one of these different groups. Yeah, there's going to be a large chunk of people that aren't going to uh, get caught up in this big religious battle that, that we're seeing going on. Mm -hmm. um, and so the devil has a plan for them. You know, it may be he's going to reach them through this plan of, of, of getting them to, of, to accept a Sunday observance because, uh, of the, of, because they care about the environment. And so he's, gonna, mm -hmm. he's got a plan for that. Um, Ultimately, he's got all these multifaceted plans, but we even see, even Mrs. White's writings, it's quite interesting that she makes it very clear. She links Revelation 6, uh, 13 
uh, verses fo verse 14 specifically and verse 15 where it says, And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he had granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power, verse 15, to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. And then if you go back up to verse 13, it says he performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. Ultimately, we're gravitating towards this great war, this great spiritual war that is very political, that is very, very agenda driven. The final cap on all of this is the devil himself is going to show up. Mm -hmm. And he's going to personate Christ. Mm -hmm. Mrs. White takes these very verses, 13 to 15, and she applies them to Satan coming and personating Christ. So mm -hmm. he's got a multifaceted plan that he's going to get the majority with this and a large percentage with this plan and this plan and this plan. Mm -hmm. But ultimately in the end, those smaller groups of people that perhaps are still lingering and not really decisive, he's going to come in person mm -hmm. and he's going to proclaim his message to the world that's going to support this, this anti-biblical agenda that we're talking about tonight mm -hmm. and basically this imperson or personator of Christ, Lucifer himself, is going to declare to the world, yes, Sunday is my day. Yes, I love all people. Let's, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a man and you want to be with a man or a woman and want to be with a woman. Oh, abortion, we understand that there's, there are situations where you have to do that. He's going to bring all of that in and he's going to rope in the world mm -hmm. in his final push but at the end of the day, that's where we read in Matthew 24, where Jesus says, mm -hmm. don't go, don't go look, right. don't go out. At the end of the day, we have to be rooted and grounded in the Bible. And if we cannot right. be rooted and grounded in scripture to know right from wrong and take a stand on a thus saith the Lord now, then when these little plans and little agendas and ultimately the greatest, uh, uh, the greatest deception of all, the personation of Christ comes around, mm -hmm. uh, it says that it's possible that even the very elect could be deceived, meaning that those people who profess and know the truth now, uh, they know it mentally but they decide with their hand, mm -hmm. they end up with their actions to go a different route. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have to be careful. Wow. Mm -hmm. I was um, watching something on YouTube one day and uh, it was a man on the street kind of situation and he was stopping people on the street and he was saying, suppose we had a law, uh, uh, suppose, suppose we had a law where you couldn't work on, on Sunday. Would you be okay with that? And yeah. did you see that? I saw that. And they said, yeah. yeah. And then he went yeah. from there to, well, suppose, suppose if you worked on Sunday, you got fined for that. Would you be okay with yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. And they said, yes. And it's yeah. like people are moving mm -hmm. into this mindset that w the earth needs a day of rest. You know, you've got the mm -hmm. uh, Green mm -hmm. Sabbath project. You've got mm -hmm. these different projects, uh, initiatives that are going on, you know, worshiping Mother Earth and, and letting the Earth rest and all of that. So you've got that group over here, the climate change people, and then you've mm -hmm. got the right, you know, pushing for laws that are going to enforce mm -hmm. things. So it, it, is, it is a combination of left and right mm -hmm. that's going mm -hmm. to enforce. Mm -hmm. It's not just one side or the other. Right. The devil has us so divided that we think, mm -hmm. You're going to do it. No, you're going to do it. No, it's going to be a combination of the two. I just saw the mm -hmm. other day myself and, uh, on a news channel and a non-religious group wants to, to make Sunday a rest day, mm. but they're demanding they want time and a half. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they want time and a half Don't we all? to have a rest day, <laughs> right. but they want that to be part of the work week. You can cut it down to 32 hours, but Sunday is going to be the rest day. But for that day, we get time and a half. Yeah. So you're better off than working 40 hours, you know, regular. We want to only work 32 hours and we want to get time and a half. But does that surprise anybody? I mean, no. You know, we, we've kind of quit saying, well, that shocks me because almost nothing, <laughs> nothing else really shocks me anymore. It's crazy. It's so. crazy. Absolutely. Really, when you look at this, there are only two parties, you know, those who keep the commandments of God and those who war against God's go. holy law, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So we're either supporting the commandments, which would be all 10 of the commandments, or we're warring against them. And so there's, there's the worldly political party, and then there's God's party. I think, you know, you mentioned earlier, I'm on God's party. I mean, I loved it when Obama was elected. My mom was 
overjoyed. She was living in England, and of course, I have a lot in common with Obama because my mom was Irish uh, white, and his mom was Irish white, and my dad was black, and his dad was black. He was born in 61. I think I was born in 62. I know I was born in 62. He was born in 61. It was in 63. Anyway, he, we both lived in Hawaii for a little while. So when I went to Poland, this was when Obama was being elected. When I went to Poland, I was doing a camp meeting there, and I had super short hair and a suet, and it was sunny out. It was an outside camp meeting, so I wore these sunglasses. And everyone started calling me Obama. Obama. <laughs> and you know what they did? They had this fundraising day where, you know, you could put people in the water, you could do pies and crafts and all this kind of stuff. And they asked me, the, the organizer of the camp said, would you be willing to let people take pictures with you as Obama for a fee so that we could raise money for the camp? I'm not kidding. This is exactly what happened. And I stood there with people. They took pictures of me with my sunglasses on and my suit on as taking pictures with Obama. And they would pay for that, right? Yeah. So I love that whole thing. But I, I went through something very similar to what you went through. Uh, because you I know, just, I just when wanted I think to comment. About Obama, I just wanted to comment. People do me that way all the time about Elvis. They think I look like Elvis <laughs> Presley. So, uh, well, that may not be exactly true. Uh, we're trying to tell the truth here tonight. Okay, take it back. I, I, I take it back. <laughs> Go ahead. But I really could sympathize with what you were saying, Yvonne, because. I went through a little bit of disillusionment, and it was a struggle for me. I had to separate my heritage, my my desire to see a president in place who was I could relate to so much and to see that victory of, you know, here we are. And I'm going to say it this way. I'm not even going to say black. I'm going to say here I am as a mulatto, as a mixed person mm -hmm. who's never fit in on this side or this side totally, who's always felt uncomfortable when these people were talking about these people or these people were talking about these people, if you know what I'm saying, because mm -hmm. I, I was in both of those sides of conversations. Mm -hmm. And finally, there's a president who represents not just black people, but me a white black person. Mm -hmm. And it was, it took everything in, in, within inside me to just kind of pull away from that as his second term went into, you know, putting those colored lights on and moving into the support of, of, of things that were against God's law, against the commandments of God. Mm -hmm. And I recognize when you were talking, I recognize that you and I, and probably a lot of Christians struggle with that, but then I see others that don't. They simply say, no, he's the best president. He's number one. I support him. It doesn't matter that he supported the violation of God's law because he's black. That's why I support him. We're half black. That's why I support him. And for me, I just, I shudder when I think about that because I think if we're compromising on um, God's law because of a black president or someone who is in, you know, that role and mm -hmm. we could look, you know, at say, hey, that really represents me. What are, what, how are we going to stand for the Sabbath in these last days? That's yeah. exactly yeah, right. right. And yeah. the devil knows that. Mm -hmm. It is not, to me, it is no coincidence that President Obama won. Mm -hmm. It's no coincidence. It, the, uh, the devil used that to draw more black people into this, uh, this place of, of wondering. Well, and some people weren't even wondering. The guy is black. Mm -hmm. I'm black, I'm voting for him because we have never had a black president and we need uh -huh. to have a black president. And, and I think we got to a place where we let culture override mm -hmm. the Bible, but it is by, mm -hmm. it is by design. Uh -huh. And again, that's where I think we need to step back and really look at all of this from a spiritual place, mm -hmm. not a cultural place. Because when we look at it culturally, we want that guy to be in there for whatever reason. But when, when we look at it from a spiritual place and the laws that were being put into place fly in the face of mm -hmm. God, slap God mm -hmm. in the face, mm -hmm. bathing the White House right. with rainbow colors. Mm -hmm. I mean, this mm -hmm. is, you Having know. Having Easter Sunday as a Oh. Transgender Visibility Day. <laughs> yes. For mm -hmm. most Christians and Catholics and Protestants, that's a huge day. And they go to mm -hmm. church on Sunday, so it's a special. We go on Saturday, but we understand the significance of the day. Like Christmas, we know it's not December 25th, mm -hmm. but the fact that Christ was born, you know, that, that's wonderful. But for people who, who that is everything and their biggest days, Christmas and and Easter Sunday going to church, and then for the President of the United States to put up, you know, we're making this uh -huh. Easter Sunday 
Now, someone said, but that law was passed nine years ago that on March 31st, mm -hmm. that that would be transgender visibility. I didn't even know they had uh -huh. such a thing. But so even at that, you don't make a big deal out of it because no one got mm -hmm. up. They don't have any days that I know of that says we're going to celebrate such and such day because Danny is heterosexual, so we're going to have a heterosexual day. Mm -hmm. So Yvonne and me, you know, heterosexual marriage. They don't, nobody celebrates that. What in the world? Mm -hmm. So we, we're celebrating, <laughs> and this, so even at that, if there was a law, you still don't have to get up and put it over the resurrection of what people are looking right. at, the resurrection mm -hmm. of Christ. Mm -hmm. That's how far away, and people are okay with it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Christian people, most of them were okay with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I think there's a numbing. There's a numbing yes. that has happened, a, a gradual desensitization <clears throat> to spiritual issues because culture, it, it's in the media, it's everywhere. And, and I, I'm so glad we're talking about it because mm -hmm. it needs to be exposed. We don't like talking about it because it's very sensitive, it's touchy, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, yeah. but, but it has to be exposed. Well, I think it helps bring about the shaking. The shaking has already started. Mm -hmm. We just not, we've been scared to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We see mm -hmm. all of this happening. And mm -hmm. I see what I see, some of the, what we would consider great preachers, <laughs> even in our church, going to be shaken out because they're choosing to follow mm -hmm. culture and politics rather than the mm -hmm. Word of God. Mm -hmm. So there's no mm -hmm. guarantee. So when he says the, the, the devil's about to deceive the very elect, who would you think that would be? Mm -hmm. People who know the most and have, have learned the most and have the gift of prophecy, that that, that would be who his target would be and to see him get that. Right. And then by preaching that the United States has always been a dragon, mm -hmm. tells people, especially minorities, don't respect this country. This yeah. country is mm -hmm. bad. It's always been a dragon. It's always been a, the devil. And so though many, they're not only, um, you know, minority millionaires, there's some billionaires and, you know, movie stars mm -hmm. and Hollywood and all of these, don't, this has always been bad for you. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. really what it says. Maybe it's right. subtly, but that's what it says. So mm -hmm. now we see, as Bible predicts, no respect for God or country. I mean, what's mm -hmm. happening, yeah. the end times, crime, things going, people say, well, I deserve this. So they're breaking into stores, closing stores all over New York City and different cities because people say, hey, I deserve this. I'm being discriminated against. I can do this. And I mean, mm -hmm. And, and, and we see those things happening. So it's, we're, 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 as I said before, the church is in a mess. But before we end this, I want to get some good news from you guys. How, what's going to happen in, in here? We're going to have a shaking. What's going to happen with that shaking? Who's, shake, who's left and who's shaking out? And then what's going to happen after that? If it's latter rain, how does that work? And where, where are we all going? And how are we going to get united together, black, white, Hispanic, you know, everybody, all, all nations that are Christians, you know, those of us who all believe in keeping the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. That's who Jesus is coming back for. Mm -hmm. He's not coming back for an Adventist. He's not coming back for a Baptist or a Pentecostal. He's coming back for those who keep the mm -hmm. commandments of God mm -hmm. and have the faith of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I want to respond and say, in the days of Israel, when the nation was split, notice North and South, Northern Kingdom, Southern Kingdom. Both of, those, both of those divisions of Israel fell, but there was a remnant. There was a remnant that made it through. Mm -hmm. We're told in Daniel 11 that the, there's the king of the north, the king of the south, the devil's working both sides. But amongst this spiritual great controversy battle, there's a remnant. Mm -hmm. When you get over to Revelation chapter 14 and you're reading that third angel's message, it makes it very clear that there's Two, two sides of the story, really. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it comes down to those who worship God and those who worship the beast. God has a remnant people. I want to say this, though, really quickly, and then I want to read something here that I think is very interesting. I want to be kind of, I want to go to the other side here for those who might be hearing us and it's like, well, man, they're really bashing the left. They're really bashing the left. They haven't said anything. Uh, it yeah, seems we, like they're totally that. Republican. We did I, that I, the first hour. I want, to, so. I want to make this very clear. There's many people that think, well, the, by default, I, I, I think, you know, there's people that throw their support behind Trump and the Republican Party and they think that Trump is the savior of America and mm -hmm. they go online. Mm -hmm. And here's where, I, here's where I have an issue. Professed Christians go online and the spirit in which they push a, a, a Trump Trump agenda or a Republican agenda comes across not in the spirit of Christ, but it comes out mm -hmm. of they're, they're sharing what they believe to be morally right with the spirit of the devil. 
Mm -hmm. And we have to be careful with that. Mm -hmm. Read the back of the book as we've been reading here. Mm -hmm. There is no man that's going to save this nation. Mm -hmm. There is no man. There's no party. There's no uh, uh, political system or political individual that is going to save this nation. This nation will speak as a dragon. It's already begun. This nation will fall like the rest of them. Mm -hmm. I love my country. I'm an American through and through. I'm proud to be an American. But the back of the book I have read mm -hmm. and God has already spoken and he has already told the future of this nation that we are heading in a direction where the people are going to, the majority of the people are going to give up on the morals of God. They're going to curve under the pressures of culture. And it says this right here in Testimonies for the Church, volume 5, page 451. It says, by the decree enforcing the institution of, pap of the papacy in violation of the law of God, our nation, the United States, will disconnect herself fully from righteousness. Mm -hmm. When Protestantism shall stretch her hand across the gulf to, to grasp the hand of Roman power, when she shall stretch over the abyss to clasp hands with spiritualism, notice the language here, when under the influence of this threefold union, our country shall repudiate every principle of its constitution as a Protestant and Republican government and shall make provision for the propagation of papal falsehoods and delusions. Then we may know, notice how she ends this right here, then we may know that the time has come for the marvelous working of Satan and that the end is near. That marvelous working of Satan is the mm -hmm. personation of Christ. Mm -hmm. So what we see here happening is that this nation, there, there's no saving this nation. Okay, I want to mm -hmm. make that very clear. Now, I'm not telling you what to vote. Exercise your right to vote. That's yeah. your freedom as an American citizen. So we're not telling you how to vote here. What we're saying is don't allow your political stance or your allegiance or alliance with the political party or individual to cloud out your spiritual mind yes. of the Word of God. Because as we read in Matthew 7, 24, Jesus says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew. Are all that coming to the earth? Is that coming? To, are the rains mm -hmm. going to descend? Are the floods going to mm -hmm. come? Are the winds going to blow? Is strife and persecution coming? You better believe it. Mm -hmm. It says, and it beat on that house and it did not fall for it was founded on the rock. Mm -hmm. That's our message. You know, you can mm -hmm. choose and have, exercise your right to vote all you want as an American citizen mm -hmm. on who you believe is the right person to vote for, but it should never be at the expense that's of your right. relationship with Jesus That's Christ right. and the morals and the principles and the commandments on which his people shall stand. Amen. I've, I've had mm -hmm. people, it's a good word. I've had people, we're putting it all out there, so I'll go ahead and we'll, we'll put it out there. But I've, I've had people say to me, um, you know, in fact, we had a question a while ago. Do we, I think we answered it earlier. Do we think Donald Trump will bring about a national Sunday law? Donald Trump in himself won't. What could it happen if he's president again? Of course. Of course. So it we, we, we don't know. We're, we don't know that, but he very could do it. Put, put that up. But we, we have, what I see is, is we have people that we've already legislated the United States of America, the negating of two commandments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? The sixth and seventh commandments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yet most of us are oblivious to it because again, as I said this earlier, we're looking ahead mm -hmm. for what's going to happen while the, the church behind us, the pastors out here preaching and their church is being eaten up by ravenous wolves mm -hmm. coming in mm -hmm. with all kinds of false doctrines. And so here we are. And, and so I've had people say, well, you know, uh, I've said it, when I say this myself, I can't vote for anybody who supports their platform that says, uh, you know, they're for same-sex marriage, the LGBTQ, same-sex marriage and abortion. Now, I just won't because as a, somewhat of a student of the Bible, I see that's me helping negate the commandments of God. Mm -hmm. People say, well, yeah, but the other side. I said, well, what about, what if Donald Trump, for instance, ran this next, on uh, his presidency this time on the platform put me in and I'm going to put in a national Sunday law. Then yeah. Yvonne and me say, we're voting for Trump. Everybody would look at us and say, are you guys crazy? <laughs> right. Well, you're going to vote for Trump and he's for a national Sunday law. Yeah. And I look back and say, and you voted for whomever that, you know, yeah. that, that's already negated God's commandments with the sixth mm -hmm. and seventh commandments. That's just as crazy to me. Of what, course we wouldn't vote for him. What's consistent with both beasts in Revelation 13? The dragon. <laughs> yeah. The dragon's right. behind the first beast. That's the dragon's right. behind yeah. the second beast. That's Same right. thing with these political parties today. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm.
Brother James. And I love that because, yeah, well, Re Revelation chapter 18, there's a lot of people looking at this program, and they're, they're right here in Revelation chapter 18. They're God's people, and they can relate. You know, we've been talking about people who aren't going to like it because maybe they're leaning toward the left, or people who aren't going to like it because maybe they're leaning toward the right, and we're kind of taking some shots at each one, and we're basically saying you don't want to be in either party. Uh, Revelation chapter 18, there's a lot of people out there who can relate and they're, they're saying, like we're saying, it's hard for me to want to even vote because which way do I go? I mean, you've got, you know, so much immorality and, and a lack of principle in, in either one of these. Our country's going to, to pot. So Revelation 18, it's the fourth angel of the three angels' messages, kind of summarizing the whole of these three angels' messages about the mark of the beast. And it says here that it lightens the earth with God's glory in verse 1. And he cries mightily with a strong voice, saying that Babylon has fallen, confusion has fallen. We're in confusion right now. I think what we've been talking about is clearing up that confusion a little bit. We don't want to be in a political party. We want to be in God's party. Mm -hmm. And if right. God's principles are being violated, we want to follow God's principles, no matter how much we can relate to to the person up there. Danny, you said, you know, people ask, would, would Trump pass a Sunday law? Well, why don't we ask the question, would Biden pass a Sunday law? That's he's right. Catholic. Mm -hmm. He's connected yeah. to the Pope. Yes, he he's is. more connected to the Pope than Trump is. And, mm -hmm. and Pope wants a Sunday law, out openly wants a Sunday law, whether it's climate change or whether it's going back to the institution they've initiated in changing the Sabbath to Sunday, they want a Sunday law, and Biden is connected with him. So right. would Biden pass a Sunday law? Absolutely mm -hmm. he would, it's, it's according all, to what we're seeing. It's, it's all right? possible. It's all possible. Yeah. So possible. when we look at this, notice what it says here, and uh, all nations have drunk of the wine of her fornication, verse 3. And then he says in verse 4, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, yeah. that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. If you look at Revelation 18 as a summary of the whole prophetic scenario that, that Ryan was just talking about, Revelation chapter 18 is summarizing that. If you look at that, what you're going to find is this. We need to come out of Babylon. Mm -hmm. We need to come out of the whole political system. Mm -hmm. We go. cannot afford to be on the right or on the left. We've got to be com become completely independent, Absolutely. as you mentioned, independent of the system. Now, if mm -hmm. we're going to make a mistake, if we're going to err, it would be okay for us, according to Romans 13, to err on the side of supporting legislation that supports the last six commandments. Paul in Revelation. That's what I want Romans you to bring out. That's, that's a question yeah. we're getting over and over again. Thank you for, yes. for bringing out. People are writing saying, don't you know, and these, some of these are Adventists, you cannot legislate morality. Do, do, that's you, right. You cannot do people saying you cannot legislate the last six commandments. So you can tell, tell according us to Romans chapter 13, you can the, the last six commandments are specifically mentioned in relation to submitting to the powers that be paying taxes to whom taxes are due and the sword that they yield in God's place to enforce morality. As you said earlier, uh, Danny, if we don't, if we can't enforce morality, then you can steal, you can kill, you can, you can do whatever you want to, to people around you. We know that morality is enforced. In fact, if you look at Romans 13, very carefully, you're going to find Paul in relation to submitting to the governments and the law of the land, he quotes five of the six commandments. And even though he leaves one out, he says this, if there's any other commandment that is missing from this, it is summarized in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Yeah. Well, there are four other commandments and they're not summarized in loving your neighbor as yourself. They're summarized in loving God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Mm -hmm. Commandment one, two, three, and four. So clearly Paul is establishing a principle here that A.T. Jones argued before the legislature, a legislative committee in 1888 against the Sunday law. And he said, listen, the government can enforce any law that has to do with the last six commandments, but it cannot enforce any law that has to do with the first four commandments. Mm. That's why Christians can actually vote against uh, abortion mm -hmm. with a clear conscience. They can say, no, a woman does not have a right to kill an unborn baby. That is a person mm -hmm, in there, mm -hmm. and you cannot kill that person. And you can say, well, women should have to do a right to do whatever they want with their bodies. That's true. You can tattoo your body. You can pierce your body. You can do whatever you want with your body. But that baby is not your body, as you've said. I'm just going to quote uh, Danny Shelton here. Mm -hmm. You, if you're pregnant, you are a babysitter. There's somebody else in there, and that body is not your body, and you have no right to kill that person. If that person is still in utero and the someone, you know, 
gets in a car accident and, and kills a woman that's pregnant and the baby dies and the, the woman survives, that person is going to be charged with manslaughter for killing that baby who's not yet born. Mm -hmm. So we've got we've got some clear laws here that identifying an unborn baby as a person, we can support those laws. We can support laws that are against abortion. We can support laws that uh, deal with morality. It's those laws that deal with the morality that relates to our worship of God that we cannot support. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, I have a young cousin. She just texts me, and we don't always agree on uh, politics. And she wrote me one of the wisest things I've heard <laughs> mm -hmm. in a long time. I love it. We're talking about what's going on here. She said, uh, Danny, have you ever heard the saying about the left wing and the right wing both belonging to the same bird? Mm. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's good. Right. I like that. that. Left and right, right belonging right. to the yeah. same bird. bird. And so bird. that's what we're seeing that's with it. our politics. We've got them on the left, the right, but it's all to the same and bird. And the devil's the bird. That, that the yeah. United, it's the United States of America, right. mm -hmm. that not just one church or one people or one president or one whatever. Mm -hmm. So we're still open. We don't know who's mm -hmm. going to bring about. We know the devil is, right. but we just have to right now put, I think... Uh, I've said it earlier, but we're going to have to submit and commit our lives to the Lord. And we only have nine minutes left. So let's talk a little bit about latter rain and what we can do as a people and how can we sigh and cry, you know, for God to, to, to take over this church in our lives and how can we as family really mm -hmm. come together? It, it, to me, it's, it's as simple as getting back to the fundamentalness uh, of putting Christ above anything else, mm -hmm. looking to him. Go back to that first angel's message. If, mm -hmm. every, if all of the world would submit and bring their life in harmony with the first angel's message, there would be no need for a second or third angel's message. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fear God and give glory to him mm -hmm. for the yeah. hour of his judgment has come mm -hmm. and worship him who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. In all other right. words, what God is saying is I want you to make me Lord and King and Savior of your life. 100%. Mm -hmm. John 15, abiding in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. When you get there to uh, uh, John chapter 12, he says, and I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all people to me. All of this strife and this trouble and this, 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 this battle that's going on, even within the Christian churches, because we've taken our eyes off of Jesus. Mm -hmm. We have taken our eyes. We have it on all of these political agendas and we've got it on the horizontal that's going on around us mm -hmm. when we have totally forgot to look up. Come on. Mm -hmm. We've got our eyes as Numbers 21 when Jesus told, uh, told Nicodemus, the one thing in that chapter that you can do to hurry the work of the Holy Spirit when he's talking about the fundamentals and Desire of Ages says that John 3 makes the plan of salvation more simple than any other part of the Bible. When you look there, he he says, he says uh, as, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so shall also the Son of Man be lifted up. Uh, we've got our eyes on all of the snakes around us, and we're not looking up. Mm -hmm. We're not looking up to the Savior. Mm -hmm. And so to me, the answer is really that simple. When you take your mind off of the world, that's not me, mean, it's not me, doesn't be aware. That's not, don't be, right. I'm not saying don't be educated, don't be aware, don't keep your eye and to be aware and educated on what's going on around you, but don't become so overwhelmingly focused and and drowning in that, that you don't have your eyes on Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because in a moment of time, you can take your eyes off him, get mm -hmm. it on something else, all the while thinking you're following the Lord, mm -hmm. when in reality, you're one of those that will be saying, Lord, Lord. Yes. And he say, I'm sorry, I don't Amen. know you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. how do we go Steve. about, is, is there going to be a latter rain experience for God's people? It's happening right now, Danny, as we speak. If you look in Deuteronomy chapter 32, what God says, he identifies the latter rain. And he says here, give ear, O heavens, and I will speak. Hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. That means my teaching. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass, because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribing greatness unto our God. He is a rock. His work is perfect. All his ways are judgment, a God of truth, and without iniquity, just and right is he. 
So the latter rain is the doctrine or teaching of the truth of God, of his character, of his word that is without iniquity, without transgression of his law. What we've been talking about tonight is the message of the latter rain centered in Jesus Christ, because God purposes, according to Hosea chapter six, that Jesus Christ himself would come to us as the latter rain. And Jesus Christ was the one who walked between the Pharisees and the scribes. He was the one that, that uh, empathized with all of the people that he came in contact with who were sinners. He sat with publicans and sinners, but at the same time, he was spotless. He stood for the truths of God's word while he loved the sinner, while he interacted mm -hmm. with sinners, while he ministered to sinners, while he came to set the sinners free. We cannot look down our noses at any people group, LGBTQ, mm -mm. Uh, Biden, uh, Republicans, Democrats, whoever they are, God has sent us here for a specific purpose, and that is to preach the goodness of God to the world That's and right. to uplift the law of God, the principles mm -hmm. of God's commandments, which are a reflection of his character. And as soon as we get into political parties, we are being deviated from this message, this latter rain message that God has given us to teach the truths, the doctrines of his word, the little rain on the tender herbs, a little bit as you can handle it, and then the full measure uh, of upon the plants. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to be poured out upon people with truth, with righteousness, with judgment, with the principles and truths of God's word. That's, That's right. beautiful. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we stand here tonight, and I think I can speak for all of us. We're all sinners saved by grace. Yes. So we're not Amen. here pointing fingers at people and judging people's hearts. When we talk about sin and, and we talk about open sin, that's rebellion against God's laws. And so all of us break God's commandments. If you think you don't, or I think I don't, that's, we're in bad shape spiritually. Mm -hmm. yes. We're all sinners saved by grace. So what we're saying is, as we as a church are called to be watchmen on the wall. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. called to be watchmen on the wall. Three ABN to give an undiluted three angels messages. I see for the first time in just the last few years, finally understood after about 36, seven years now, what that means that it literally can happen in this church too. Mm -hmm. We're not above mm -hmm. being deceived. We're not above mm -hmm. and we think we have it all and we know all the answers can even point to who it is that's, that, that's going to bring about this Sunday law. We don't know those things, but what we mm -hmm. need to do and hopefully we all can do is we submit and commit our lives to the Lord. We go forward and, and Jesus, our mission is take the gospel of the kingdom. Jesus said, go ye into all the world. And that's what we're supposed to do, teaching them to observe all things, his commandments, his uh -huh. laws. And that's such a privilege. It's such uh -huh. an opportunity. Uh -huh. And he uses failures like you and me. Uh -huh. Isn't that amazing? God uh -huh. would use Amen. fail failures. And uh -huh. I'm saying that word because I failed over and over and over. And some of you will write me and remind me of that after the program. Because <laughs> usually when I, when I talk like this, they'll write me. Sometimes I get hundreds of emails and say, you're not so perfect yourself. You've done this, mm -hmm. you've done that. Though they don't really know right. a lot about me personally, right. but sometimes they're right. Mm -hmm. And I admit, I'm the chief of sinners. But thank right. God that if we come and submit or commit our lives to him, mm -hmm. he will forgive us from Amen. our sins and cleanse us from all oh, unrighteousness. That's right, that's right. So Amen. for each and every one of us today, when we talk about politics, when I hear the name Donald Trump from somebody who's not a Trump supporter, I've never heard anyone's name with so much hate behind it. They can't mm -hmm. just say Trump. They either hate him, you know, or they're just, he's the savior. Mm -hmm. So again, our eyes are on a man when they should be on mm -hmm. God That's right. mm -hmm. and understand there's a great controversy going on between good and evil. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. either the Lord or Satan and who are we going to serve? Mm -hmm. Jesus yeah. is coming back, Brother James. And that's unacceptable for a Christian. It's unacceptable yeah. for a Christian to take the name of a president or former president on their tongue with hate. We are here to pray for all men, especially those that are in authority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ab absolutely. Mm -hmm. Ivana may me at some point, and we, we may have the opportunity, but I would say if we have the opportunity to pray with any government official, president or not of either party, we're going to go do it doesn't mm -hmm. mean we support him. It means we know that they need prayer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And why mm -hmm. not be Christian people? Why not go pray when that opportunity arises? Mm -hmm. So That's right. our goal is we love each other. And folks, Jesus has come back for a purified bride, a mm -hmm. purified church. Mm -hmm. And honestly, our, our church, we, 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 as a people, when I say church, I'm talking about our people, 
our, our members, our pastors, our leaders, all the way to the general conference. We're all frail human agents in need of a savior. Mm -hmm. So what I'd like to do, Yvonne, maybe you can just take us out. There's somebody who want to maybe just even give their life to the Lord or ask God to forgive them where they are. I know I want to and, and start over. God will give us a brand new chance. Would you mm -hmm. say a little prayer Amen. for us? Sure, sure. Dear Lord, we just thank you so very much for <clears throat> your presence and your power, Lord, your ability mm -hmm. to transform lives and hearts. And we just pray, Lord, for those who are watching, who are feeling that they need a change, that they've made certain choices that they're uncomfortable with. Please, mm -hmm. Lord, continue to be with them and to guide them and to direct them into all truth. We thank you. I thank you for my brothers here and my husband, Lord, and I just pray for all of us here at 3ABN and all the ministries around the world that we will be able to set forth your gospel uh -huh. and your mm -hmm. agenda in the world. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. We only have a few seconds. I forgot to mention again, if you want to call in or during the week, call in and make a donation. We're going to send the LGBTQ book to every pastor in America is our goal time is all gone. We'll see you next time. May the Lord richly bless you abundantly more than you could ever ask or think.